it's Larry Lursey. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to take a look at Topaz Labs JPEG to RAW. And what this does is takes a JPEG and turns it into kind of a RAW file. We'll take a look at it and uh, give you kind of the ins and outs of the software and talk a little bit about why it might be useful for you or why it might not. Um, make sure you hang on to the end. I'll even tell you how to get it at a discount if it's something you'd like to do. But if we're ready to go, let's roll the intro. Okay, before we jump into Photoshop, let's talk a little bit about uh, what the software does and doesn't do. You know, when you think of a JPEG versus a RAW, the beauty of a RAW file is that it captures all this information, and then we kind of cut it down to right here in the JPEG and just take kind of the stuff we want and throw away the rest, which is nice from a uh, allowing us to process that thing faster, takes up less space, things like that. But you are losing a lot of that information. And when Topaz is recreating that raw file, you're not getting all that information back. You know, it can't create something from nothing. If you've got an area where the, the shadows are completely blocked up and it's just solid black or the highlights are just solid white, it's not going to be able to bring back detail into that necessarily. Certainly not like you would be able to do with a raw file if you're just a stop or two off sometimes you can use that raw file to move up and up and down on your exposure a little bit and bring back some of that detail you're not going to necessarily be able to do that so i think it's really important, important to understand what the software does do and what it doesn't do if you're not shooting raw already you obviously probably should be. There's not a whole lot of reasons anymore to be shooting JPEG. It used to be that it met you were a lot faster in your camera, easier to process, and it was a little too cumbersome working with RAW sometimes. The way things are now with software, I feel like we've gotten to the point that there's not really a huge advantage to JPEG over RAW other than maybe storage. So um, I don't know that I would encourage you to be using this on a day-to-day -day basis by shooting uh, JPEGs all the time. But where it might come in handy, a couple of things. Maybe you've got a JPEG file that uh, you shot with a point-and-shoot camera, or even more likely, it, older images. Something that you did 10, 15 years ago before you started shooting RAW, and you've got this JPEG that now you're trying to do something with. Maybe those would be prime candidates. Uh, another option might be a client gives you a JPEG to work on, and you're kind of stuck with that JPEG. So sometimes things will come up where you have to use the JPEG, but hopefully you are using the RAW in general anyways. But here's what the software will do. It is not going to give us back that huge wide exposure range. What it's going to do is it's going to give us a file, a DNG RAW file that we can manipulate in Camera Raw, which is nice. So if you're really good at Camera Raw, that's what you're comfortable in, you'll be able to use this in there and make some tweaks. And we'll take a look, a look at that when we get into Photoshop. It will also help you a lot with with artifacts that you get from just that JPEG can't hold up to the resolution. You start getting those little squiggly lines and the image start, starts falling apart. It'll help you with that. It'll also give you some sharpening. You tend to get a little bit of blurring with JPEGs sometimes, especially with older JPEGs, and it'll definitely sharpen those up without causing too much extra trouble. So we'll take a look at it uh, with an image or two and kind of show you what it does and what it doesn't do. All right, so here's the image I'm going to use. Um, I don't have a whole lot of recent JPEG files, but uh, this was one from probably about 10 years ago or so uh, where it was probably done with like a point and shoot or something and so it just was only recorded as a JPEG so there's no raw file. So I thought this would be a good one to experiment with in the software. So what we're gonna do is pull up the software. It is only a standalone. You can't use it as a plugin through Photoshop. So I'm going to pull up Topaz JPEG to RAW and we'll take a look at what it does. Alright, so here we are in the software and uh, basically our options here is we can either click open to go search for it. Uh, I am just going to drag the file in right here and let it go to work. Okay, so let's take a look at what we've got here. We've got our, our input output up top. This is the file that we're working with. You can bring in multiple images and, and work with them in a batch type system, which is nice. But let's take a look down here. Our original is on the left, preview is on the right. Now again, the things we're looking for here is fixing some of your artifacting and then um, sharpening basically and getting ready some some of that blur without causing the kind of side effects that we can sometimes get from sharpening. So let's kind of look around this image a little bit. 
and I think this is kind of a good area to look at because we've got boat and we've got water and so we're seeing our before and after we've definitely increased the sharpness if we look along here versus along here there's definitely some more sharpness now if we come over here to the side what we've got is manual and auto mode auto mode is basically going to just make all the decisions for us which again if you're not wanting to get too involved with the thing and uh, really tweak it and spend a lot of time auto is going to get you in the ballpark and you're generally going to probably end up with a better image than you had using auto but uh, manual kind of gives you a little more uh, flexibility so I like to use manual and we're going to basically be looking at two things up here reducing the JPEG artifacts and removing blur so let's start with the blur which you can see here it's set at about 0.3 go up a little bit more on that bring in a little more sharpness I think that looks nice um, we've got some noise here in the water uh, I think it still looks better than we have here I, I feel like there's not quite the problem issues that we have here in the water over here it's slightly better we can look up maybe in the water we don't have a whole lot of JPEG artifacts happening here in this image so that's not really a problem sometimes you'll get those almost looks like little worms and things uh, where it's those little squiggly lines where it's really struggling uh, to hold that image together and you would just basically come up here and and move through some of this with the slider and even that even down here in the water you can see from here to here it's done a nice job of kind of cleaning that out and giving us kind of a smoother clean look without this uh, kind of splotchiness that we have over here again it's a 10 year old JPEG uh, it's never going to get to the point where it looks like you would have with a higher resolution raw file but you can certainly see that it has taken this to this and has definitely improved it let's drag this over and look at a little more of the wood just to make sure we're happy with that I think that's pretty good so those are really the only two options that you have to work with and I think it kind of helps when you know when you're looking at the image what it needs more almost all JPEGs can probably benefit from a little bit of um, remove blur especially since a lot of your JPEGs are going to be older files now that we've got that how we like it we go down to the output and basically you're going to decide where you want this to go and uh, in this case we're just going to put it in this uh, topaz folder that I've made we can do a prefix or a suffix so if we wanted to just call it uh, you could put a TPZ or something on there and that would tell us topaz so instead of this 3347 files it can be 3347 TPZ and that'll tell me that I used topaz on it and then I've got my format choices the DNG TIFF or TIFF and I'm gonna just leave it as a DNG we hit start let it go to work Once that's done, uh, we can go ahead and just uh, minimize this. And then what I want to do is I want to go into Bridge and bring up that image and see how it reacts as a raw file because uh, we should be able to, to go in now and bring it up through that process. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so here we are in this JPEG folder and you can see we've got this TPZ file so we're going to bring this into camera raw and it does actually open in camera raw which is nice now again I think we have to have realistic expectations this black area down here for example if it's completely blocked up and there's no detail left then we can come up here to our exposure and open that up but if there's no information there there's just no information there with a raw file you might be able to bring out some detail here with a with a true raw file but um, with this it's going to allow us to make some adjustments we can certainly lighten and darken it uh, play with the contrast we can play with the temperature a lot of things that we could do in Photoshop um, as well but this does kind of gives you give you the ability to you could stack stack images you could have this and then do one where you bring the lower down so you can see the water up here uh, and then maybe combine those together but it does give us a little bit of control we can do a lot of the things that we would normally do to our images in camera raw this way 
and um, everything from um, you know your noise direction sharpening to just these exposure tweaks and you can get it to exactly how you want it so it does give you a little bit of control to kind of start over in a way with the JPEG but it's not going to be all the benefits that you would have from a true raw file but we get all these things set here we'll go ahead and hit open it and then we'll be right back in Photoshop that we could do with this file as we want and, and further edit it just for grins let's look at one more image here this is one just taken with a, uh, a point-and-shoot camera that uh, at a rodeo and you've got the rodeo clown here waving at the audience and it's it's okay it's a little soft up in here and so I thought it'd be interesting to take a look and see what the software would do with an image like this just kinda of more of your casual snapshot type of image so let's jump back into Topaz and take a look alright I'm gonna go up to 100% here and I'm looking at a couple of things I'm gonna look at, at this face area maybe we can also kinda of look at the uh, the words here let's start out up here in auto just see where auto puts us and it's actually pretty good I'm gonna switch back over to manual and play with this blur a little bit because that's one of the main issues with this image is getting that blur to go away so I'm gonna bring it up pretty significantly up to about 55 I'm afraid to go too much further but we're definitely getting much more detail through here the face looks way better we can actually see the eyes versus them getting really blurry here and you know I'm not seeing a lot of consequence from that um, looking at the hat here we've already got kinda of some noise and stuff going through here and um, looks about the same over here I don't really notice a, a, anything worse or better we can kinda of look back in this area here it's done some sharpening back through that and so really the, the big difference I see is through here um, through the face and hat area so we'll go ahead and save this one again in this DNG format okay so I've opened this file back up in camera raw and uh, it looks pretty good you know we can come back through here and again play with um, some of the exposure if we want to lighten things up a little bit we could warm it a bit and this is certainly a place that we could come back through here and work on some of the noise reduction a little bit. You've got some noise going on back in here. You could um, reduce that noise a touch. So we do have a little power to change some things around and make some tweaks to it. We'll go ahead and open it and look at these side by side. And we'll go here to 100% just to look at these two and definitely the face looks much better over here after the processing and again some of these things could be done once we've brought in the JPEG as is but it's kind of nice having it as that what they call a raw file you've got a little bit of a flexible format that you can work with that way before you even bring it into Photoshop so especially if you're someone who likes working in camera raw and you've somehow been stuck with some images that uh, are uh, JPEG format then uh, that might definitely be a nice plus for you. Okay, so now that we've seen what it can do and what it can't do, the question is, is it worth having? And so I think it's one of those things that's going to be a very specialized software. If you're someone that basically is shooting raw all the time, you're probably not going to have a whole lot of use for it, because as you could see, you're getting some flexibility back, but nothing like having the raw file. So I don't know for a general raw file shooter it's going to be of much help. I think what it's going to help is someone that for one reason or another still just shoots JPEG all the time or uh, someone who has a whole bunch of JPEGs that they need to convert. Does it create a raw file like you would get out of your camera shooting raw? No, it doesn't. Um, it doesn't really claim to do that. But if you think of it this way, that you've got a JPEG on this end, raw on this end, tons of information here very little information here I think this puts you somewhere in the middle it gives you kind of a compromise it's not quite as good as having a real raw file but it's better than just the JPEG and so for me I think it does give you some advantages and if you've got a lot of JPEGs to work with it might be worth trying out if you do decide you'd like to buy it you can use the code Larry photo and that'll give you a discount at the Topaz website it'll actually use for any other software so um, they've got a lot of great stuff just remember uh, you can use that Larry photo and get a discount
So I hope that helps. I'd love to hear your comments on if you've tried using this and how you think it uh, compares to just a regular JPEG. And uh, if there's any other things you'd like to see in future videos, be sure and let me know. But that's all we have for right now. I will see you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.